Isolating important butterfly skills. All butterfly swimming, or should I say, all teaching of swimming, teaching of butterfly, in fact, teaching of any stroke, gets back to basics. And the basics are the prone float. So in butterfly, what we need to do is isolate the skills. What I find a good way is to get children to use flippers, put them flippers on, and with the flippers we do two things. One, we float and just use our arms. We do not kick. There is no kicking when we do the skill that we call floating butterfly. We are isolating the skills. Have the young child to float fully extended, head down, looking at the bottom, arms outstretched, level with the shoulders, with the thumbs pointing down slightly. We know that to go forward, we must get our elbows up early. If we try to teach a child to do the keyhole pull, what will happen is, invariably, they will do a breaststroke stroke and lose that elusive early catch that's so important in butterfly. So we float, float. Then it is elbows up, pull down under the tummy, flatten those hands and push hard under the belly button, push hard right back to the leg, still floating, recover, Palms facing up, the palms are facing up, around you come, and the ball and socket joint in the shoulder will put those hands in the correct position, thumbs down slightly, level with the shoulders, ready to go again. In floating butterfly, using those arms, what we try to do is three pulls, then breathe. Three pulls, then breathe. Do not allow the children to do any kicking whatsoever. This is floating butterfly, arms only. In isolating the skills, what we've done here is we get the young swimmers to do arms only butterfly up in one lane, then they under the rope and they come back, butterfly kick on the back. I find that getting children to do butterfly kick on the back, it helps to teach them to kick both ways because we must learn to kick up and down in butterfly. If you like doing this particular skill where you go up in one lane, butterfly kick coming back, you might like to isolate and change the butterfly kick. For example, one time you come on your back, next time you come on your tummy, third time you come on your right side, fourth time you go on your left side. So you are continually rotating. This helps, this helps eliminate boredom which could come if you just kept kicking on your back. But for me, I'm a great believer in meat and potatoes. What do I mean by meat and potatoes? I mean repeating the skill correctly over and over and over, not trying to do too much. Keep it simple. Keep it simple and repeat, repeat, repeat the skill. So important in isolating butterfly. I will have other sections on teaching butterfly where we introduce other skills, but right now we're just isolating these two important butterfly skills. That is floating butterfly one way, butterfly wriggle the other. Now, let me make some observations about what the coach does while the children are doing this. 
The coach's duty is to communicate with the children, with the swimmer, all the time. So with young kids, it's best to position yourself at the end of the pool where you can give feedback. Feedback should be both positive and negative. But my belief is that positive feedback is much better than negative feedback. For argument's sake, you could easily say, I love the way you're pushing back, but I would like to see you recover your arms a little bit straighter over the top of the water. Give that positive read. If you see something good, tell them. Good work, good girl, good boy. I love the way you do it. You may even want to stop the group and get one of the children in the group, one of the swimmers in the group, to actually demonstrate. This is what a good boy does. This is what a good girl does. And as a result, you will have all the children trying so much harder. Positioning is important. I like to position myself at the end of the pool where as the swimmer stops, I can communicate with them immediately. But there's more ways to communicate than just pure verbal communication. A coach, depending on what they're doing, in butterfly, of course, you need to be at the end of the pool so that you can give a thumbs up, a visual, positive, reinforcement, thumbs up, or actually tell the child when you get there. But if you're along the side of the pool and the children are doing freestyle, then it's easy for you to give hand signals uh, on what you want. For example, lift your elbow high, telling them on a high elbow recovery, or push your hand back. Give that motion of pushing back. But make sure when you do this, you've got good eye contact with the child. Feedback to students is very, very important. If you have children that are having difficulty in mastering a skill, then maybe you like to engage the parents to practice land drill skills at home. For example, if they're not getting their arms straight in butterfly, you get the parents to say, lie them on the floor at home and get them to recover above the carpet with straight arms, but don't allow them to turn their hands over. Let the ball and socket joint do that. Or it may be breaststroke kick. Breaststroke kick, I love to get kids down and do that dead frog position at home. This is a perfect drill for parents to do and show the children how to turn their feet out in breaststroke at home. So engage the parents to practice land drills and skills at home. This will reap great rewards. For me, repetition is the key. Repeating the action over and over again. But repeating bad, incorrect technique can be just as detrimental. So you as a coach have to be there correcting and reminding on every occasion and get the children to repeat the skill over and over and over correctly. It's very, very important. Without correction, the children, the students, the swimmers cannot get better.